Assalamu alaikum. I'm Aisha Ayab and you're watching Animals and Awareness. I'm a veterinary science student at the University of Pretoria and my guest with me today is Rashid Ryan who is also a student at the University of Pretoria studying veterinary science as well um, and we will be discussing the topic of a plant-based lifestyle or plant-based living. Um, Rashid has been vegetarian since last year as well. Um, welcome Rashid. Thank you so much for, for having me Aisha, you know, it's always nice to sit here and interact with people, speak about your views and how you perceive things, so thank you, I really appreciate bringing me in today. Okay, thank you. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to discuss was, there's a lot of confusion usually about the different like plant-based lifestyles that are out there, such as being pescatarian, vegetarian, or vegan. And like, there's a lot of confusion around that and a lot of people don't know what the differences are. So do you think you can like clarify those differences for us? Okay, so firstly, pescatarian, your diet includes of fish and vegetables. So you don't eat meat, which includes chicken, white meat, and then your beef, mutton, which is red meat. So that's the first one, mm -hmm. pescatarian. And then vegetarian is a completely vegetable-based diet. You do eat animal products, but not the meat from animals. So things like eggs and milk. So you still do include animal products in your diet, but obtaining these animal products doesn't include taking the life of an animal. And then lastly, vegan, which is the strictest form. Mm. This is a completely plant-based diet. You don't consume animal products of any type. So no milk, no eggs, nothing. Nothing you eat involves animal agriculture. Okay, so you're, you're a vegetarian. So you I'm don't eat meat, but you do eat milk and eggs and cheese. Yes, for now. Hopefully, okay. hopefully one day I'd like to know complete the process and become vegan all in due time but yes mm. for now for now i'm vegetarian okay yeah so so am i I'm also vegetarian i also don't eat meat also just eat um i do eat dairy and eggs but no meat um what like i'm interested to know what made you like convert to vegetarianism or to like a more plant-based lifestyle so it was like a lengthy process because initially initially I was part of the, the collective of people who were very oblivious to what vegetarianism actually was. So my sister first converted to, to the green lifestyle, as we call it. <laughs> and I used to always make fun of her, like every time we used to go and eat out, I used to say, oh, so are you having another salad? Or if we used to be in nature, I used to be like, so... Um, Looking at those trees, does it make your mouth water? You know, I was very, <laughs> like yeah. I, said, I, was very, I was very oblivious. But I started like getting more invested in the idea, interested. But a lot of things like helped me to make up my mind. So first and foremost, as Aisha previously mentioned, I'm studying veterinary sciences. So my whole degree is based around, you know, grooming and saving animals and animal welfare so i feel like it's very it's very hypocritical for me to be studying this for seven years and saving animals lives just to you know go home and then have a piece of steak on my plate and to go to mcdonald's mm -hmm. so i just that doesn't it doesn't sit right with me knowing that i'm saving them and i'm going home and then eating them so that's like the yeah the biggest... i feel like the same way like it kind of undoes everything when you all your studying and all of the knowledge and all of the practice that you put in all of the hard work that you put into saving animals and then it, it, it all gets undone when you come home and you eat like a burger or a steak or whatever i completely relate to that yeah yes exactly so that was the the first thing that helped me another thing was first year of veterinary sciences um first semester holidays I went to a holiday resort in the Northwest province with my friend and his family. And this holiday resort is it's like a game reserve with a lot of chalets. So the chalet that we were staying in was very close to where the herd of kudu were. And we were praying one evening and this kudu came to us, giant male, beautiful boy, came to us 
and I fed him a loaf of bread. And while I was feeding him, I looked into his eyes, you know, just making eye contact. And I saw like the innocence in this animal. And I was like, you know, you don't deserve to, you don't deserve to be, your life doesn't deserve to be taken away just to fill somebody's stomach for half an hour. And that also, like, it really made me think like, you know, like the severity of actually taking an animal's life for your own dietary requirements when there's so many other better ways to go about it yeah yeah Yeah. and like what would you say like a lot of people i'd say like are very like i get a lot of questions about how do you meet all of your dietary requirements as you said like all of your nutritional needs how do you aren't you like iron deficient i get that a lot aren't you anemic aren't you blah 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 all of these things and what would you say like can a plant-based diet actually meet all of your dietary needs like is it like is it possible in your opinion well it's been scientifically proven numerous times over and over again that a plant-based diet is nutritionally complete obviously you get those incompetent people who will you know bring up the iron deficient and all of that but you know simply from eating things like cornflakes and cereal which is iron fortified you get all of these things that you are missing from consuming meat so there really isn't an excuse to you know i eat meat because if i eat plants i'm not getting what i need or i'll be unhealthy so like i said a plant-based diet is nutritionally complete and there are many supplements Mm -hmm. in terms of plants that meat gives you and then at the end of the day you save your animal life as well yeah exactly like and also there's so many options out there for like plant-based protein or plant-based iron like there's a high amount of iron in spinach or in like leafy greens like kale and then there's a large quantities of protein like and much more wholesome protein and much more complete protein than the protein you would find in like beef or chicken because that protein in meat has been like it's been artificially like created sort of with those animals being injected with a lot of antibiotics to make them grow bigger. And so their meat is not completely like whole and healthy. Um, and also, especially in red meat, it's covered in a lot of fat. Whereas the protein that you would get from say legumes, baked beans, uh, lentils, chickpeas, all of those things is a very wholesome and complete sources of protein without the extra antibiotics and the fat and the cholesterol, et cetera, et cetera. So there's so much, there's so many like different sources of nutrients. And even if you think about it, there's also like how many different animal species are there? Like chicken, sheep, cow, fish, like four types of animals that you eat like regularly. And then if you think about it, how many different veggies and like edible plants are there out there? Like there's so many, there's a whole list. So there's a lot of like variety and a lot of sources of all of these nutrients. Yeah. And then a lot of people also talk about vitamin B12 and um, like the deficiencies that people following a plant-based lifestyle can get um, with regards to vitamin B12 as like it's common knowledge that vitamin B12 is typically only derived from animal products. So what do you have to say about vitamin B12? You know, this whole like issue regarding vitamin B12 is actually something that I was very concerned about before I, before I transitioned, but it's because I didn't know, I didn't do my research and I didn't actually find out like, are there supplements for B12? So vitamin B12 is a type of vitamin that is only activated when ingested twice. So this might cause some confusion, but it's relatable to cows, especially because cows are herbivores that we call ruminants. So basically what this entails is that they ingest their food, they regurgitate it, and then they re-ingest it, activating the vitamin B12. That's all good and well, but a cow's diet that it's fed consists of teff and pellets. These things don't contain B12 naturally. So cows are supplement are artificially supplemented with vitamin b12 by things like natural grasses from the from the farmers but it's not things that they usually eat so why not rather just take tablets that have vitamin b12 or vitamins especially for the specific vitamin rather than taking an animal's life in the process 
because either way, this cow is also supplemented with B12, which is essentially what I do as a vegetarian, because meat eaters would be vitamin B12 mm. deficient as well, if it weren't for the fact that farmers were supplementing the cow's diet with B12. So essentially, mm. you know, me taking a vitamin B12 supplement is the same as the cow taking it. The only difference between me and a, and a meat eater is that I'm supplementing in, supplementing it in a way that saves the animal's life. Whereas directly, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you supplement like directly, and then either way, whether you want B12 from a cow, it's still going to be like an artificially supplemented cow that was given yes. B12 by the farmer. It's not an like sort of like a natural source of B12, so to say. Um, and then another thing is like the talking of like the benefits of becoming plant based or eating like a plant based diet or living a plant based lifestyle is um, there's benefits to obviously the person who's on that diet and then uh, there's benefits to the animals and there's benefits to the environment as well. So um, now we've spoken about how a person can live a nutritionally complete lifestyle on um a plant-based diet and how there's so many actually bodybuilders and athletes out there that are vegetarian or vegan and completely healthy, completely fit. And now can you tell us a bit more about the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle to the environment, which I believe is a lot less known. Like people are always very shocked when they hear about the impact of meat eating on like climate change and the environment um, and all of those things. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Okay, so firstly, just an interesting fact for you guys to help you understand the severity. 16 hectares, which is equivalent to 16 soccer fields of Amazon rainforest, is cut down every single minute just to allow space for animal agriculture to take place. And, you know, this leads to things like habitat, um, you know, destruction of habitats, species extinction dead zones in the oceans because all of the waste that animals produce, you know, it runs off into these waters. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's like, I can sit here and speak to you guys about the severity, but you know, like I said, before I was a vegetarian, I was oblivious to all of these things. Like I didn't know like the process that it actually takes for me to go and order that burger from McDonald's. You know, there's so many things that are compromised and affected just to produce one beef patty it's actually insane yeah and also like the amount of like methane emitted from animal agriculture like so methane is a more potent um greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide and the amount of methane emi uh, emitted from animal agriculture has a greater environmental impact than the effect of the carbon dioxide emissions from the entire transportation industry like put together and if you think about it that's actually like insane because all we're taught about in school and you know in all of those things is that transport is bad and cars release carbon dioxide and airplanes release carbon dioxide and we need to you know minimize our our carbon footprint and all of these things but they don't teach us that the main cause of climate change is actually animal agriculture and it's actually like it's so hidden because yeah i don't i have no idea why but it's it's definitely very much buried under the whole transportation thing which is kind of used as like a facade of climate change when it's actually not the real cause or it is a cause but it's very very much secondary to animal agriculture um and then the other thing that I wanted to speak about is obviously the benefits of a plant-based diet now to the animals themselves. Um, well, obvi like obviously they're not going to be killed, but yeah, are there any like other benefits or what is the purpose of the animals then if not for us to eat? So animal, cult animal agriculture is driven solely by the purpose of making profit and generating money. And the sad reality is, and it's a cliche because we hear it all the time, but, you know, money, money is evil. Money is the root of all evil. And this applies very much to the animal agriculture industry. Because when the main priority is making money, animal agriculture, you know, when the main priority is making money, animal welfare will always come second to this. And it's so, so sad because, 
you know, these animals, they have lives, they have emotions. But, you know, just an interesting fact, dairy cows, right? The, the farming of dairy cows. So these, these female cows are kept in extremely, extremely harsh conditions. You know, a cow is big, you'd think naturally, this animal needs a lot of space, a lot of freedom, you know, to exercise regular body movements and, you know, just to be comfortable. But these dairy cows are artificially inseminated when they, when they are very young and their whole lives they're kept in these cages. And when, the, when it's time for the baby calf to be born, when this mother is able to lactate, this baby calf is taken away from the mother. And you know, think of a maternal bond, a mother and a child, a mother and a child's bond. Everyone knows how intense and how strong this is. It's extremely traumatic to this mother cow when her calf is just, you know, taken away from her and then her milk is just used mm -hmm. and she just pumped for milk day in and day out. She's tired, she's exhausted, these cows collapse. And even like regardless of the mother, this baby cow now doesn't get the milk that it needs, the milk that it needs to grow. It's fed from, you know, synthetic milk and it's it's so bad and I didn't know like I didn't know any of these things and I actually recommend something. There's something called Cows Pharisees on Netflix. I started to understand all of these things when when series like this was recommended to me. So yeah. Mm. And yeah, I think that what like the point that you mentioned about how the milk is then taken away after the, the cow is lactating because she's about to have a baby and then her baby is born, the baby is taken away so that we can then have the milk that the mother cow has produced. And I think that is a major point that goes over a lot of people's heads is that cows don't naturally produce milk. It's mothers, mothers, like mammal, mammal mothers that produce milk. Like lions produce milk for their baby cubs, or humans produce milk for their babies. It's a mother cow producing milk for her baby. It's not cows in general, dairy cows that produce milk. No, it's mothers that produce milk. And that's the thing that really it goes over a lot of people's heads, and a lot of people fail to understand that also because it's really hidden by, you know, the media, etc. Um, but thank you so much for your response. I think we'll take a short break and then yeah, stay tuned and join us after the break. Donate your zakat to Ashraful Aid. Your zakat can help feed an orphan, support a widow, build a home for a refugee family, sponsor a HIV student, and much more. With Ashraful Aid, you can make a real difference. Visit our website at www.ashrafulaid.org to make a donation. Make your Ramadan meaningful with Ashraful Aid. Freedom Stationery supply Marlin and Marlin Kids pens to me and my school friends. They supply just about everything we need to help us get a better education. From books to files to rulers. In fact, any access, access or I, access, access or uh, pfft, accessory. Any accessory we need. Freedom Stationery. Education for the nation. Um, what does accessory mean? This Ramadan, spread the love with Sunshine D Margarine, the perfect addition to your Seri table for spreading, baking and cooking. Sunshine D is rich in essential vitamin A, E and D and is the tastiest way to get their day or night started. Sunshine D, tastes nice, no lies. At Sentio, our invest for good philosophy is based on a genuine desire to use our investment skills for the benefit of broader society by investing responsibly, giving charitably, and developing talent that will transform the investment industry. Visit www.sentio-capital.com for more information about our Sharia investment products and start saving with us today. Sentio Capital. Invest for good. Sentio Capital Management is an authorized financial services provider. These days, I'm more health conscious than ever. So tonight, it's stir fry for dinner, cooked in healthy Helios Pure Sunflower Cooking Oil. Mmm. Helios is pure sunflower goodness, packed with omega-6. That's good for your heart. And is approved as part of the Heart and Stroke Foundation eating plan. Dinner's ready! Helios Pure Sunflower Cooking Oil. A healthy family is a happy one. 
The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asked, which charity is best? He replied, a drink of water. Africa. Every day, two billion people wake up and have no access to water and sanitation. Sponsor a water well for 14,800 rand, a borehole in Afghanistan for 49,500 rand, or a borehole in Africa for 55,000 rand with Africa Muslim Agency. Give water as a means of Saraka Jaria today. Call AMA on 011-834-8685 or donate online. Africa Muslims Agency, commemorating 35 years of empowering, educating, inspiring. <laughs> Salam Media, your spiritual companion this Ramadan. <laughs> begins the rest of our lives and through every moment i'll have you by my side hand in hand walking through this life hand in hand and with you by my side from way before the sky met the sea Allah wrote your name right next to me For eternity I'll have you next to me Together in Jannah Ameen Forever in Jannah Ameen through all the trials you should never fear Cause through all those times I'll be right here Hand in hand walking through this life Hand in hand and with you by my side From way before the sky met the sea Allah wrote your name right next to me For eternity I'll have you next to me Together in Jannah Ameen Forever in Jannah Ameen Deep in your eyes, I see my life Every moment of life, I'll have you here Hand in hand, walking through the... Connect and stay ahead with Salam Media uh, 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 This is Salam Media, coming to you live from South Africa uh, 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 uh. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Animals and Awareness. Um, during the break, we received a question from one of our listeners. And the question was, what type of discipline is required for one to end up becoming a pescatarian, vegetarian, or vegan? Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll hand over to Rashid. And Rashid, can you give us a bit of insight on like the discipline that requires you to live in a plant-based life, lifestyle? Yes, of course, I would love to. So this is also one of the things that I was really concerned with um, after transitioning. But like I mentioned a few times in the, in the previous questions that I was asked. So, you know, change, change is difficult. Change is it's really difficult, especially because I'm 20 now and for 19 years of my life, I was eating meat you know, fast foods, Burger King, McDonald's, takeaway, you name it, everything. And this was, it was a usual part of my diet. So change is difficult. And I think that's what a lot of people are afraid of. You know, I won't lie. I still, I still do get craving sometimes. It's normal, but you need to have a, a very, you need to be strong minded because I always remind myself, like if I smell KFC driving past on the road, yes, obviously, it appeals to me, you know, it's it's normal. Like I said, I grew up my whole life eating this. But you need to know, like, the backstory. You need to know deeper than surface level what it actually entails. What it, what was the process that caused that chicken to end up in your box? Or what caused that meat to end up on your plate? That's why I said earlier, I recommend to anyone interested in, in wanting to change Go and watch documentaries like Sea Spiracies or Cow Spiracies on Netflix. It's you know available to you because when you when you it's 
it's one thing like listening to me telling you all of these things and trying to visualize it but if you see the severity with your own eyes and you see the conditions of animal agriculture and everything that these animals go through just for you to enjoy a meal for 30 minutes when it's not even necessary it's not it's not a necessity for your survival when you understand the processes that have to occur for you to be able to go to a drive through and order a burger it really helps you to you know it helps you to stay strong and to not go back to eating meat so and it gets it gets easier like you know the longer yeah. you do it it gets much easier i really i really do agree with um the point that you made there in that like we like in today's day and age we've become so detached with the process of where our food came from so we'll just go into like Woolworths or to the butcher or wherever and just pick up like a parcel of meat bring it home cook it without even thinking twice like this meat it was actually a living animal it had to go through this this and this to get to where it is now in my frying pan or on my plate and you know this disconnection that we have between the food that we eat and where it came from is it's really um it's one of the main like it's at the root of why we're so like consumeristic in terms of meat and why we just we just consume it and we don't think twice about it um and i think it's like when we have that in the back of our mind we always have like okay this meat it actually came from somewhere it didn't just magically appear on the shelf in the butcher it came from somewhere it has a story it was an animal that did have emotions that did have a family that does have intelligence that does have feelings so to always keep that in the back of your mind whenever you're um whenever you're feeling weak or you're feeling like oh my goodness that kfc smells so good you just have to remember and remind yourself that that meat it didn't just come from nowhere um, so I'd say it is like there is a certain amount of discipline that you need to have um, when following a plant-based lifestyle, but it is definitely not impossible. Um, which also brings me to the other topic that I wanted to speak about was, um, especially it's very prominent now in Ramadan, where we have like savouries and halim with mutton in it and, you know, all of these beautiful types of foods like acne and cultural dishes that typically like in Indian culture and in, sometimes in relig religiously, uh, like there's a lot of meat um, involved in like, um, yeah, especially now in Ramadan and Eid time, there's a lot of meat dishes and they're all really good. And I just want to talk about it, but like, how do you deal with like the cultural aspect of it like it also has to do with the discipline aspect and how do you manage that or or navigate it yeah so being you know, plant-based when, when when you tell people that you're vegetarian or vegan they think that all you eat is salad you know yeah salad, yeah salad for breakfast salad for lunch salad for supper salad for supper. yeah they think that all you eat is salad but it's actually so untrue you know i think that i eat very exciting food most of the time you know and also i like experimenting with vegetables a lot of the time so i eat a lot of dal i'm sure many of you are familiar with dal i mean who doesn't like dal let's be honest mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so i eat a lot of dal and dal is actually vegan friendly so it's made from legumes it's completely plant-based so i eat a lot of dals things like biryani and acne and curry there's so many vegetable options what this it's not just meat and chicken i eat a lot of things like pastas you know pizza samosas cheese and corn vegetable spring rolls you know there's so many options to supplement eating meat and actually you know i eat a lot of plant based meat as well like i know a lot of the fast food restaurants are incorporating plant-based options onto their menus and I've tried a lot of them and personally I haven't had a bad experience as of yet so I eat things like you know plant-based chicken nuggets plant-based strips plant-based chicken mm -hmm. schnitzels even fish surprise me surprise me you get plant-based options for fish so I really don't eat boring food whatsoever you know another thing related to the food when when people hear about vegetarianism and veganism they'll think that like eating eating vegetables really reduces your you know the maximum capacity that you can function at but also again that's very untrue i don't know how many of the audience today how many of the viewers are familiar with sport 
but names like Mike Tyson, you know, one of the most accomplished boxers in the world, he's a vegan. Alex Morgan, the best female soccer player for the past few years, vegan. Kyrie Irving, a basketball player for Brooklyn Nets, one of the best in the world, vegan. Serena Williams, most accomplished female tennis player of all time, vegan. Lewis Hamilton, everyone knows Lewis Hamilton, most accomplished Formula One racer in history, vegan. So, you know, it requires a lot of research and, you know, you need to look into these things. You can't just have that mentality of, oh, you know, uh, I'm not going to eat meat, so, you mm. know, I can't do anything. I'm going to be weak and tired. And it's really, it's so untrue. Yeah, and untrue. because if you don't do it properly, like you will have certain nutritional deficiencies. I mean, if you become vegetarian or vegan and all you do is eat like cornflakes and Oreos the whole day long, you will have deficiencies. So it, it does require a lot of like for planning and meal prep. But if you just put in that little bit of time, a little bit of effort, the, the rewards are exponential. The rewards are great. Mm. You know, also with, and, regarding, regarding the food, like we haven't discussed, you know, health options for you as an individual and like how it benefits you. Ever since yeah. I started, I started eating uh, a plant-based diet, ever since I incorporated into my lifestyle, you know, my skin has become so much clearer and I just, I feel so much healthier because these meats nowadays, it's so processed, like the food that I eat, it actually doesn't taste synthetic, you know, it tastes natural, mm. regardless of, you know, that, you know, there's so many benefits, it improves the health of your gut, so you can digest food better, you can absorb nutrients better, it reduces inflammation, and eating meats, a plant, I mean, a plant-based diet, eating fewer calories you at the lower weight you know you with with weight you know there's things involved like cholesterol you know heart failure heart attacks mm. you incorporate this plant-based diet into your life all of these risks are, are reduced by so much so i just feel since i've since i've transitioned i feel so much healthier yeah and um as you mentioned like it's not like Eating a plant-based diet, it does not mean that you must only eat vegetables the whole day long or salad the whole day long. Um, like you said, there are a lot nowadays of plant-based meats um, out there. So you can have like a plant-based beef patty or plant-based chicken nuggets because at the end of the day, there are very few of us that actually became vegan, vegetarian because we don't like the taste of meat. Um, it's because we care about the animals or we care about our health or we care about the environment. It's no one that becomes vegetarian or vegan because they don't like how meat tastes. So there are options out there. Like it's, it's, not, it's not a shame to admit that you enjoy the taste of meat. Um, so there are options out there for people that, have, that are thinking about coming over to vegetarianism or veganism or even trying it out for a little while um, to enjoy the taste of meat without actually eating meat. Um, and then we'll just take a short ad break now and then, yeah, we'll see you guys after the break again. Asalaamu Alaikum. Striving to uplift the disadvantaged and empowering through education and dawah. Donate to the SADN centers, the MA Motala Islamic Center, as well as our Islamic centers in Amoti, Imtalumi, Bocciabello and Castile. Donate your zakat and billah today. Contact Farooq Sheikh 076-321-0650, Yusuf Mohammadi 072-259-3457 or the SADN head office 031-304-8000. Our account, Standard Bank, account number Zero five zero eight five six two nine four 856 294 for your zakat or 50 for your lilla. Dawa through education, education through dawa, the Southern Africa Dawa Network. Shimmer, sparkle, captivate. Nothing less than a masterpiece. Droplets of gold inspires precious design. Platinum bursts with intricate freshness, and every pure diamond becomes more than just a girl's best friend. Voda Gold Gem Jewelers, where timeless dreams become a reality. Come to us. We tailor make designer gold, platinum, and diamond jewelry. Trade in or remodel your old gold. Clad yourself with classy name branded watches. We offer insurance valuation and freezer card calculation. 
Visit us at 534 Ridge Road, Overport, or call 031-208-9142. Voda Gold Gem Jewelers, manufacturers of fine gold and diamond jewelry. Looking to earn inflation-beating income? Agraria Sustainability Engineered, Africa's first publicly traded Sharia-compliant sukuk on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, provides regulated and transparent access to superior and sustainable investment opportunities in the agriculture value chain. Agrarius is brought to you by 27.4, leaders in Sharia-compliant investing. Don't get left behind. WhatsApp 011-442-2467 or visit 274.com for more. 27.4 Investment Managers is an authorized financial services provider. T's and C's apply. Are you looking for a cross-border road transport company that is committed in achieving high safety standards, who is fast and efficient, and also excellent customer service? Cardi Global specializes in cross-border transport from South Africa to Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Malawi. Cardi Global, situated at 10 Daniel Road, Ben Rose, Johannesburg. For inquiries, contact our trained staff on 011-614-3108 or email info at gardiglobal.co.za. Safe Long haul into Africa is our business. Cardi Global Transport. After 11 years, Syria remains the world's largest refugee crisis. We from Assad just to come and die here. More than 6.8 million Syrians have been since 2011. All of my country destroyed now, and I uh, fear about my children. And another 6.9 million remain internally displaced. Our condition is very bad. We have no proper tents, nor a proper living. I have 10 children. Million refugees have found refuge in neighboring countries, such as Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan. Penny Appeal South Africa has been distributing hot meals and food parcels to food insecure families and provided mobile housing to those in need. Your donation, no matter how small, can make a big difference. Visit our website www.pennyappeal.org.za or call us on 031 110 Penny Appeal South Africa. Small change, big difference. This Ramadan, spread the love with Sunshine D. Margarine, the perfect addition to your scary table for spreading, baking, and cooking. Sunshine D is rich in essential vitamin A, E, and D and is the tastiest way to get their day or night started. Sunshine D, tastes nice, no lies. Salam Media. Your spiritual companion this Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Animals and Awareness. During the break, we received another question from one of our viewers. We enjoy answering questions, so keep them coming. Um, how do how do vegetarian or plant-based people cope, or specifically how does our guest Rashid cope? around people that eat meat. So, Rashid, will you give us some insights on how you manage being around people that eat meat? Okay, so, in my whole family and friend group, myself and my sister are the only ones that, you know, are vegetarian. So, this, it's, it used to be difficult for me because everyone around us, they didn't share our views. And keeping that in mind, I'd like to say that I don't look down on anyone that doesn't consider, you know, transitioning to a vegetarian diet. At the end of the day, it's eternally, it's your choice. I just like to, you know, I like to speak to people and engage with them and make them understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So that, you know, even if they don't share my views, they understand where I'm coming from, rather than just, you know, oh, he just eats salad, he just eats salad. But yes, how do I cope with it? So I mentioned earlier, that I love experimenting with new food. And I feel like that's very important because especially if you are like, vegetarians are the minority. So if you are constantly surrounded by people that eat meat and chicken, and if you focus too much on, you know, oh, I can't eat that and look at that gourmet 500 gram steak, you know, 
I don't have that. <laughs> if, you, if you just focus on what you can't eat and what you can no longer do or yeah. compared to what you used to do, obviously you're going to struggle. But that's why I said experimenting is so important because rather focus on, okay, so now I have adjusted my lifestyle. Let me see what I can do. Um, try new foods, experiment. Don't be fixated on the fact that I can't eat what I used to eat any longer because if you're stuck in that mindset obviously then it's going to be harder for you so that's one way that i deal yeah with so like more focus on now like the new opportunities and now what you can eat like yes. all the and new foods and stuff that are now available to you yes yeah. and the other way that i deal with it it's like i said and for me it's the most important one because for this reason it helps you to have a strong mind and you know not like not become weak and go back to the way you used to be I said that you need to you need to understand what had to occur for that meat to end up on your plate. Like I remember seeing a graphic visualization of something that really opened my eyes. It was a short video on YouTube that was recommended to me by one of my friends that are also vegetarian. It was about a little girl sitting down at a table for breakfast and her mother gets her garden of milk out the fridge and she pours it into a cereal bowl. You know, sitting there, all you see is the milk. It's easily accessible. You can find it in every shop. You know, that's all you see, you know, the milk. But imagine instead of pouring milk into your cereal bowl, you pouring in the blood that was shed, the trauma that the mother and her calf experienced, all the pain that was involved, the severity, you know, the adversity that that cow had to go through. Imagine seeing all of these things instead of seeing that milk simply or imagine you you know going to a butcher instead of seeing a simple label that says you know 10 grams of mutton imagine there was a link to a video that showed you about the cruelty of the abattoir and the animal agriculture industry if you had to mm. see all these things you wouldn't you wouldn't feel comfortable eating this meat so you just need to keep that in mind and remember remember what happened for for that meat to become yeah. accessible to you. So if you understand that, then you know it becomes easy for you when trying to deal with this. Look, at the end of the day, it is still difficult because you know you grow up your whole life eating you know certain things and you enjoy them. And it's like I just said previously, I didn't convert, I didn't transition because I didn't like the taste of meat. I love the taste of meat. Very few people don't like the taste of meat. But it's transitioning, you know, for the better, for the planet and for animals. So as long as that's your focus and that's your main goal, then dealing with it becomes less difficult and it's, you know, it's more tolerable mm -hmm. around people. And as you, as you progress and like, I've only been vegetarian for about seven months now, but when, when you, when you're vegetarian for a year and then 10 years and then 20 years, it just becomes easier and you just become you know, more strong-minded about the whole cause. So yes, that, yeah. that's the deal with it. Yeah, I, I hear you, I hear you, I do. And I think it's also, it's also important to remember, like when dealing with people that do eat meat or that don't really understand like your perspective, it's also just important to maintain like respect for each other and each other's decisions. I mean, you know, it's very hard to convince someone to, like give up a whole way of life that they've known since they were very young. So we have to like approach people that eat meat from a place of understanding and empathy and respect for their decision as well. And you just kind of like coexist and to teach each other more about the different ways in like a gentle way, a kind way to always be, you know, don't come across as like condescending or as superior or arrogant to always just have like humility and to always be willing to teach others in like a very gentle and and kind manner with that that is the way that people will be more willing to or more open to learning and to listening to you and what you have to say um with regards to like plant-based living so it's also important to keep that in mind is like tolerance for everybody and respect for everybody no matter what the decisions are um yeah if there are no more questions then i think we will end it over here jazakallah so much once again this is rashid from the university of pretoria veterinary science student and vegetarian um, and you are watching Animals and Awareness. I'm Aisha, and please join us next weekend for another session. Jazakallah so much, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>